So, this is my first Dharma talk, and for you it's the second one, for the most of you. Um, actually, I uh, heard a lot of uh, linguists here before. Um, so, I think I've my biggest weakness because my Japanese is still not so good. I think I missed the best ones or a lot of them. And the other ones are a lot of like, um, most of them are, uh, I don't know, like, use a lot of, uh, how can I say, like, put a little bit Sigmund Freud, psychoanalysis together from Wikipedia. It was quite boring for me sometimes. Um, or quotes from the Dalai Lama and poets. Um, but uh, Shukak Sam told me I should um, try to speak about my experience in life. So I try to, yeah, these three chapters to find something or found something that, yeah, kind of fits to some parts of my life or my, I don't know, uh, my powers or my weaknesses. So uh, today we're reading um, book six. <coughs> The Zul Monkey, chapter 4 to 6. Um, Shogak-san will read for me the Japanese version. In a talk on various subjects, Dogen instructed, Students of the way, do not worry about food and clothing. Also, Japan is a small country, far removed from the Buddha country. There are quite a few people who were famous as scholars of the ex exoteric and esoteric teachings, and who have become now to later generations. There are also many people who devote themselves to poetry, music, literature, and the material arts. I have never heard of even one of them who had an abundance of food and clothing. They came, no, because they all endured poverty and forgot about other matters. So they could devote themselves completely to their own profession. This is all the more true of people learning the way 
in this tradition of the patriarchs. They have abounded their occupation in society and never seek after fame and profit. How could they become wealthy? Also, this is the degenerated age. There are thousands of people in the monasteries in China who are learning the way. There are some who came from remote districts or left their home province, provinces. In any case, also, they never worry about their property, almost all of them are poor. Their only concern is that they have not yet attained the way, sitting either, uh, either in a lofty building or under it. They practice zazen, wholeheartedly as if they had lost their mother. I personally met a monk from Shisen, who had no profession because he had come from a remote district. All he had was a few pieces of ink stick. They cost about two or three hundred won in China, which is about twenty or thirty won in Japan. He sold them, bought very low quality Chinese paper and made an upper rope and a lower clothes with it. Whenever he stood up or sat down, he made strange noises. Thought he never paid attention to it. Someone said to him, go back home and bring some personal belongings and clothing. He replied, my home is far away. I don't want to waste time on the road home and lose to practice the way. He practiced the way all the more without being concerned with cold weather. This is why man, many prominent people have appeared in China. So, so it, what first was a little bit like, not first, but like, I was wondering, but um, in the chapter before, I think, or two before, uh, Dogen was also saying, like, don't worry about food and clothing. I said, like, why food and clothing? Like, What's the thing? Um, but I think it maybe at this time, like that was the only thing. Maybe like people are easily like to buy to them. today would be maybe I don't know, like iPhones or car or something. Um, but actually, that's not the point. Um, yeah, and also, I think like when I read here um, about the poetry and musicians and literature and material art guys at these days, I think today it changed a little bit. Like when I'm thinking about, I don't know if you know these guys, Conor McGregor or Floyd Mayweather, like swimming in, in dollars or Michael Jackson, we spoke about him today. Um, so yeah, things change a little bit. Um, but was, what was for me more interesting was the, like the last part when he spoke about this monk um, from Shisen just got these paper clothes um, and I thought like where can I find myself in this kind of situation um, so gave everything to just to practice something actually I think it's maybe this place here because I'm living in a room with a with a guy on 10 quadrat meters sleeping on the ground every morning 345 I have to stay up sit on a cushion, hope that I don't fall asleep, sometimes fell asleep. And you know the story goes on every day, could be at home, laying next to my girlfriend, but I'm here, why? I don't know actually. Um, but there's another story of my life, I, actually it fits maybe a little bit more. So I was like, so my mom kicked me out of house when I was 17, or 17 and a half because I was a little bit like a rude boy. I got my first, um, like, like, what's the name? Like, the police came to your house and searched everything, because I done graffiti at these times. It was two times, with 15, first time 16, and then on one point it was too much, and my mother kicked me out. So I, I shared a flat with a friend of mine, and had, like, no money, really. Like, a little bit for my mom, and I don't think I worked at this time actually. So I had really, really little, little money. But still like focusing on doing graffiti. Really like every, kind of every night the school was also like kind of boring at this time. So I really had to, it was the main thing at this time. So I like staying in front of the, in the train yards and like this 
special feeling still, and I think it was the song. Something special. And this time was the only thing I was focused on doing, like, kind of try to go every night out. And so, but what you do, you, you have this small amount of money, but you need spray cans, and uh, we also traveled a lot with my, with my friends, like, all around Germany and Europe. So I need money, but yeah, also I need food and um, pay my rent at this time. So this was like a like a remember this time there's this supermarket named Aldi. Yeah, maybe some that's everything is really cheap. So you can buy for I don't know what was it this time maybe bag of rice for eighty cents or something and tomato paste. Tomato mark maybe some guys know it. So this was my main thing I bought for like months or I don't know for a long long time. Just bought tomato paste with sometimes oregano, sometimes chili, and rice. That's the only thing. The two times the, uh, the electricity company did my because I can't I didn't pay the bills because I also need this break in. Um, so yeah, this was like I directly thought about this because it was like I was focusing so much. It's not like doing zazen or something, but it was like for me really really important this time. And actually, it was I just like still I like really much rice, and you you guys know all of you put like uh, put uh, mayonnaise on your rice, and it's me who put in ketchup on the rice every time. I think you know, and uh, maybe it's still from the time I actually like ketchup on rice more than mayonnaise. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Please let's continue with the with the next story. <laughs> when you have questions, please get them in your hand. Save them. そうそう。お。スペシティは。ステージ 今もまた本能もいよなし Chapter 5. Dogen instructed. I have heard that at the time of the founder of the monastery on Mount Seppo, the temple was so poor they sometimes had no food to cook or sometimes had to eat green beans steamed with rice. They lived such a poor life while learning the way. In later years, there were never less than 1500 monks staying at the monastery. Ancient people practice in such a way. Today, we should also be like this. This degeneration of monks is often caused by wealth and fame. In the time of the Buddha, Devata aroused <coughs> jealousy, jealousy since, uh, since he received daily offerings of 500 cartloads of provisions. Wealth was harmful, not only to himself, but made other people commit evil deeds. <coughs> How can sinful people who learns the way become wealthy. 
even it is an offering made from pure faith, if it accumulates in abundance, you must see it as a debt and want to return it. People in this country make donations for the sake of gaining personal profit. This is only natural in the human world to give more to people who approach with a flattering smile. However, if you do so to carry favor with others, it will surely become an obstacle to your practice of the way. Just enter the hunger and the cold and devote yourself completely to practice of the way. So in the first, read the first verse, like the one with the guys on Mount Setbrook. I thought, like, what the hell, why they don't have hatakis and work like us, these lazy bastards? Um, so, sorry, like one short stop. I really heard often that I'm using like bad words, like it's only here. I heard really often, like, oh, Sebastian is using bad words. Um, um, like, it's only here in Antaiji, actually. Um, outside, I never heard this. But uh, uh, I think it's like not my attention to be like rude, like, or maybe, no, it's not. Or I don't want to confront anybody. I also like actually like jokes about minorities, so, but it's, I think it's a, you have to think about the attention in this case, so please don't take it personal, but sometimes yeah, my language is not that good. So yeah, these lazy bastards from one set book. Um, um, yeah, I've come a little bit out with one set book. So yeah, actually I don't take donations, so I work for my money, but maybe it's so, I want to speak a little bit of my relationship to money. Um, I directly like, thought about Antaji and money and there was nothing really, So, but there was one thing, there was this one guy, Victor, I had a special relationship with him, so um, remember once we sit on a on the truck and he saw that I uh, didn't take a picture with my iPhone and I was like, why are you having an iPhone? Like, this is totally crap, like, you spend so much money for your iPhone and why you don't spend it for poor children? And I was directly like, my stomach was like, mm -hmm. um, so I just spend it because I want to spend it and it's like, I work for this money and just like, if he wants to spend his money for, um, for poor children or for, I don't know, for, for swimming suits. This is like, I don't care, but yeah, I, I know that perhaps it's like sometimes I'm spending money a little bit too, too easily or um, maybe it's not the iPhone, but in other cases like, um, but I don't know if it's really bad. I never went in depth, it depends on the time when I was 18. Um, you know this, but uh, since I'm working, I stay actually good with my money. But sometimes I think I take a little bit like the easy way. Like I know that uh, I heard about dojo -san, that he wrote in one of his books about these taxi people and make a little bit fun of them. Like the guys who don't take the walk up here, just they take a taxi. Um, maybe sometimes I'm one of them. So, okay. Hmm. Got these bags, so why not just take a taxi? Um, what should I say? Um, and also, it's like sometimes I, I heard a lot of people like I actually really like to spend money for food and alcohol. Um, you see, but this is another thing we maybe talk about, but. Um, yeah, just a lot of my friends like, why you spend so much money on, on like expensive alcohol? And I don't know, just I still reminds like I have some dishes I ate in my life or some wines or whatever, like still sitting here, like, oh. and actually every cent it was like, I don't know, uh, every euro was like, I'm totally good with it to spend it on it. Um, but also sometimes like, um, when I spend money, I have like, an, not really an example, but just want to let you know, like when I have problems with my girlfriend, like there's some struggle 
and I feel the whole situation is right now not good between us. Then I, I maybe I don't do it like I think about. Okay, now I try to fix our problem with money. But then I okay, let's today we go out and we go to I don't know we go to uh, this exhibition and then let's have a glass of champagne before or I don't know just like have a good time and tomorrow we do this and that and um, um, I do huge cooking and buy really expensive stuff and actually the time we have is really good. But at the end, it don't solve the problem. Like I just like <laughs> just like blocking these problems in this time with money. Um, actually, this also because I do this sometimes, the problems get bigger because she now realizes that I'm going this strategy sometimes. And um, what should I say? It's not the best thing. Um, um, yeah, but still, I think I'm I'm kind of doing good. Um, I think if I can't, if I'm not responsible for my responsibilities, um, and I'm getting a struggle with my money, there's something wrong. Actually, without money, I won't be sitting here right now because I'm having another life back at home, and um, I still pay my rent over there. Because what should I do? I go to Japan, say to my girlfriend, "Okay, bye bye, we stay in this flat." and so, yeah, still, I need money to be here, need, if I still want this relationship. Um, yeah, I need to take flights back and sometimes need to go down to Hamasaka and drink a beer on, on the beach. Um, so, yeah, actually, for me, money is, like, in this time, uh, important. So, I don't know, if I... Um, would have the money of like Mick Jagger or something. I don't know what's up then, but I don't think I would buy a golden helicopter, but maybe buy some more bottles of good wine. Um, I don't know. Yeah. So, please, Shogak-san, let's get over to the next chapter. One day, Dogen instructed. An ancient person said, listen, See, attain. Further, if you haven't attained, see. If you haven't see, uh, even you haven't yet seen, listen. He means that seeing is superior to listening. Attaining is super ir, superior to seeing. If you haven't attained, you should see. If you haven't seen, you should listen. And then I read this, and I was like, huh? I didn't get it. And I was thinking the whole time, like, okay. Listen, see, attain, like, mm, and I try to build me something up, and like, I, like, yes, we're sitting there and have no clue, really. And then I was, okay, maybe he means like, listen, see, like, some sitting in Zazen, I have no idea. So I um, consulted my private teacher, Shugak san, um, <laughs> and he helped me a little bit. So if I get it right, but I don't think I get it right, actually, still I'm a little bit confused. So, um, so listen is like kind of the, like the, um, the theory of, of, of Buddhism, of Dharma, or whatever. So first study and then um, do your practice, like sitting in Zazen, or do your meditation, like this for seeing, like keep in touch with reality. And so we have like the seeing, no, the hearing first. No, it's wrong. Okay, we go like this. That's, that's the eraser. This one, yeah. yes? Ooh. Let's hear it. So first, we have the hearing. And then comes the... Um, 
attain. So yeah, attain should be like when you done all this. Sometimes that consists whatever it was enlightenment, um, satori or whatever. So you have to. Black box. <laughs> no idea about this. So we don't speak about this part here. Um, so I have. In, I want to keep this in two. Um, in two parts. Like first, I would love to maybe it's catchy for you. Um, to speak about my experience with little bit about my experience with uh, Buddhism or um, meditation, I don't know, um, in these two cases. And then I want to tell you something about like where I think this also could fit in my real life. So um, it's about this hearing, because um, this comes later. So I was, a, I don't know, maybe I was five or six, I remember it. Or maybe four, I have no idea. But I know that I went with my mom, like we were in the street, and there was one of one poster. I think it was a poster, maybe it was a flyer, I don't remember. There was this guy sitting, like Buddha, and I asked her, what is it? And she said, yeah, he's doing meditation. And I uh, asked her, what's here? Yeah, there's something in mind. And we go inside, and it's like all the time. I don't understand, but it was like interesting. Um, and it was still kind of in my mind. And really early, maybe I was 12 or 13, I read Siddhartha from Hermann Hesse, before I read all the other stuff from him, but it was later. But Siddhartha was, I don't know why it was really early, I think because my father had the book, I can't remember really. And um, I read Siddhartha and I was like, it was really interesting and nice, and I remember at the end, we sit on this river and know everything, and I was like, he know everything, I don't know anything, I didn't get it, like was like, what like sitting on the river and this is the end of the story and um, yeah Buddha one me zero <laughs> and he got it I don't um, so then years passed um, and then I tr I think I, I went out of some reason to India and then tried to get one of these Goenka Vipassana courses but um, like was in time because I, I was in another place and there are millions of these centers, but it was like I think they only this, yet now they have internet, but it was so long time ago that I have to call them and try to make an appointment, so it um, didn't fit. But I still had remember there is this vipassana, um, so I, I really would like to do it. Um, then also years passed, and some years ago, I remember I. Read, I don't know how I came to this, but from, from a guy like in, I can also search about him, he's living, I think, in Switzerland, he's a weird hippie, and he um, got a story about his first Vipassana course, so he uh, he wrote it on his internet blog, I don't know, and he was really amazing, so he, he reached some stages in the first course, 10 days course, and um, there's this guy, maybe you know this book, I can't remember, it's really famous, Jana Ponica, is the name of the famous Jana Ponica? Okay, <laughs> I thought it's like kind of a famous guy, like uh, like it's an um, Theravada monk, I think he's actually German. Anyway, uh, this um, famous monk said, okay, you reached the first step of enlightenment in this first course, and I was like, wow, and he told the stories, like he could see everything in slow motion, and I was like, okay. Then I, after this story, I tried again, okay, 10 days only to see these things happen. So I, um, I applied for a course. I went there, was really nice sitting there, like mm, something happened with your body, it was amazing. Um, but we're speaking about hearing. So there was the first time like they, um, like they talked about like Buddhism, and, like everything behind. Something's really interesting, like, um, uh, what is it? Anatta, uh, Anicca, Dukkha. It was kind of interesting thing. But there was also all these things like um, there's some karas in you that you have from your past life and you only have to watch your sensations and then they go away and when you watch 
so long on the sensations of your body, all the sankharas will went away and you like getting a super healed kind of. Uh, but to do this, you have to um, think about also your sila. So don't drink, don't uh, cheat your girlfriend, don't steal, don't, 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 don't. It's just they say it, you don't have to do it, but it's better when you do it. But um, if you want to apply for a course, uh, I don't know, like a, a 20 day course or like there are some levels of course you can do. You have to do this for two years. And this was first like, oh, you know, this is kind of this esoteric stuff, afterlife and the life before and now these rules. So and this actually didn't really fit to me. But I went to several courses because this was actually kind of fun. Um, but like I tried to keep my ears closed because every night there was these Dharma poses, like that press on play and these old grandpas um, telling every time the same story. The chanting was nice actually, still like it. Um, yeah. And then I came to Japan out of um, different reason, like a friend of mine, he had a concert in Tokyo and uh, the guy who organized it, he, I didn't really like Tokyo this time, was, but I was like, okay, Japan, but Tokyo still, I don't like that much. So, but these guys said, okay, if you want to see like, whatever it means, like real Japan, I have a friend who's living kind of the mountains of Nagano, so I went with my friend to Nagano to to this guy who's living here since 40 years, he was like 72, I think he came. Um, and he's living on this house in like middle of nowhere, it's a little bit like Antaiji, like house, middle of nowhere, a lot of rules for this house, uh, Hatake outside, um, he also wake up really early every morning, so <coughs> kind of the same, but a little bit more cozy, good red wine. Um, yeah, and we're getting really good friends and I came kind of often to him because I really enjoyed the time there. And he teached me a little bit about his experience with, um, with them. So he, um, he told me about this time he went to also some monasteries back in the 80s and done a lot of Sazen. But he, we didn't, he never talk, uh, told me something about Dharma or Buddha or these things. He more showed me like this um, idea of the, est like, not idea, um, his view on Zen and the aesthetic of the Zen doors and uh, the aesthetic of the Zen gardens, not like our ones, but like, um, she showed me some in Kyoto and about, um, yeah, the like, the in Japan there's maybe not like this, what we have in, in Europe, or I have in Europe, like this good and bad from Christianity, this, this is some different, I'm really kind of interested about like, not that this is good, this is bad, there's something between. And um, yeah, these guys really also connected to nature, and I like all this style, but, and working with him on the Hatake, and, um, his, and he also know something about this place here. And he recommended me to go here because he thinks that because um, I liked his kind of living. Maybe I like this kind of living here as well. Um, yeah, so I came here and um, here I don't get much of, of this um, hearing what I thought, like this means here hearing. For me it's more a mix, hear something. I learn more in these like daily doing here and I also can't really like um, today I had a talk with Murillo like I said like I can't really say why I like this place so much because it's sometimes so shitty um, but I really like this place um, and there's so much things I can't really put in words here but I'm learning here a lot with all these rules we have and these rules making more and more sense to me and also we talk like some days ago, one of you newcomers here um, asked me if I think that you are not doing good because I 
tell you often that you're doing this wrong, and this wrong, and this wrong. I said, no, I don't think so. And I had a talk with Murillo about this. And we remembered our times when we arrived here. So everybody was, um, was saying, us, you're doing this wrong, and this wrong, and this wrong. Um, and it's kicked my ego every time. Um, but now I see it every time as a challenge when somebody is, uh, is telling me something. So this is like I'm learning where somebody is saying to me I do something wrong. Um, and now I'm also getting a little bit uh, more interested about what Zen is behind, not like for that I was like, I'll oh, just go here and, and um, practice. So it comes part by part. Um, thank you to my private teacher for the recommendation of all these books. Um, yeah, and when I'm thinking about my life, not all this stuff I was talking now about, like, cause I'm think I'm also here or sit there, cause I want a little bit know more about myself. Um, and in my real daily life, um, not real day, like in my life back at home, um, we heard about like some stories before, like about um, a sto uh, about a person with clear eyes. So. Um, Jung said, if you if a person with clear eyes um, predicts you, please uh, hear what, what he's saying. And uh, um, a person with clear eyes, this means a person who has the intelligence or wisdom to see reality, to see it a little bit more clear. My um, person with clear eyes is my girlfriend, actually. For me. Um, so... A lot of times when we get in conflict, or there's maybe an example like, um, I promise the next weekend we're going to an exhibition on Sunday. And um, but on Sunday, there's, um, oh, uh, okay, excuse me. Uh, um, on Sunday, um, I, it's possible for me to buy an, um, um, a, a vinyl collection. Um, but this comes maybe on Saturday. So I said, to her, oh, I'm really sorry, but tomorrow it's really important. I have to go there because this is the only opportunity. But I promise her, and she's going wild and crazy. And I'm like, what the hell? Why she's getting so angry about this? Like, it's just like, maybe go next weekend. For me, it wouldn't be a problem. Like, I'm just, okay, when you have something else to do, I'm really cool with it. Um, but after this, I understand, like, this is, and this is really often um, happened with me. Like, I'm thinking that, um, that people, that I see, like, only my view. So my girlfriend should act like me. Why she's getting so angry? Um, yeah, there's like in all this confrontation, I'm like, getting more like okay, mm -hmm. maybe my because I'm getting really angry about her sometimes. So my ego is maybe sometimes a little bit too big, and um, um, yeah, I can't really see her point. Or when I promise, I make it like, or not promise, but I know this is really important for everything is organized in, in our flat. Um, in fact, she was her flat and I moved into it. But I'm sometimes a little bit like, okay, this is staying around, but just a little bit. And she gets more angry than me because it affects her more. But I often really don't get it. But in all these confrontations we have, and she's show me like that I maybe only see my view, I'm learning a little bit more about my weaknesses. And um, I think she had a good teacher to learning this, because she's really like she she know her weaknesses really well. Maybe I don't know anybody who see um, weaknesses that good. Because then she done a um, for three years a really hard uh, conversational therapy. 
and she went there like every week two times for like two hours and learning about herself speaking 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 and was really like um, getting clear with herself and I think a lot of people probably could do this too it's really hard but I think for some people it would be good why I'm so confused right now is I forgot one part in the last story to tell you I was too fast um, if you don't mind I'm really sorry my weakness um, maybe it's, I'm a little bit more nervous than I thought we don't have to really get I talk, tell you uh, which part I forgot and it's in the in the chapter 5 where he speaks about the flattering smile like it's only natural in the human world to give more to the people who approach with a flattering smile however if you do so carry favor with others it will surely become an obstacle to your practice of practice of the way thus endure the hunger and the cold and devote yourself completely to the practice of the way um, I don't know why I forgot it I was too fast um, so this flattering thing, I'm kind of good in it, I think. Um, and it's really happened often in my life. Like in, I'm, uh, when I was a student, I worked in a, often in a call center or different call centers. And it's like, can you have this guy on the phone and he's really like, ah, there's this call center guy calling. But on somehow I really like, getting easy with like getting the in this little small talk about something and um, so at the end I had like my craving I want like I want these um, a positive phone call so I get more money so I know how to sneak in, in yeah that I sneak so that the people stay on the phone and at the end I don't sell them something but I make appointments for for um, insurance and stuff so I get really good money at these times and I know that I'm kind of good also when I'm um, now I'm selling and buying vinyl records so I really often go to houses of people um, of course they want to sell their vinyl collection and it's really often like 95% are crappy collections and there are some some maybe five or six good records sometimes more but um, everybody thinks this is like the main thing they have one Beatles LP inside so this is the thing so I have to deal with the people a little bit so come in with a smile have a small talk about the dog and um, oh really nice collection but are you here and there so you need to find a way but sometimes you have a collection which is really really good and the other collection I would buy for 100 euros like a bunch of I don't know 200 300 records but there's also a collection with the same amount of records, but maybe I get like 5,000 euros at the end for this collection. And I also could give these guys 100 euros um, with the same flattering, like, okay, a little bit here, a little bit there, um, telling us this record is not so good, but it's really nice. And now how you, like, why you bought it, like back in the days, why you want to sell it, ah, and your husband, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then you have to find a balance, because I don't want to rub these people up, so... You need to like on this moment i i could do it but not often I, I never do it like i give these people like i don't know 20 30 euros for the records so they're kind of good with it but you yeah that actually that's not the point um that's the point that i'm good in building like these these bonds of trust in a way but another story is um i told you a lot about my girlfriend and um, when I met her, like, I really want that woman. I went to, um, often to a cafe next to my house and she was working there. And she's a really beautiful woman. And um, I'm really into obscure music. And these women were playing music I never heard before. N no of these tracks I never heard before. And I was really like, what the hell? So, um, yeah, we started a little bit to chat. And then we um, made a date at the exhibition in, uh, uh, in Berlin. 
Um, and I um, I made her a tape, like a tape, um, but like with also extreme music. But normally I would do this tape like a nice tape, so it's like a nice like combination and this whole feeling. But I want in this moment, I want to because um, I want her like this guy with this flattering smile wants the money um, or the donations so I really want um, want this girl so I know she likes obscure music and have these some seven inches I keep and nobody of my friends really know about them because it's my little secret like really obscure stuff and uh, I get all these like hidden tracks I and put them all I know she won't know any of these songs so I put them all on this tape, which doesn't fit really good together, but every song is so amazing and so good, because I know this woman also, like, um, I didn't really know much more. I know from friends that she's like, uh, she's in university studying this and that, and she's, I know that she's really into music. So I made this tape with, I give her all my best music, don't fit really together, but it's the best thing and I know she will love it. Um, and I remember also at this day, I know she's kind of, intellectual much more than me uh, I'm not intellectual um, but I know that I also in this moment I put out a quote it fits so perfect in this moment from Bertolt Brecht I never would do this never 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 ever I would come with a quote like oh this is it good um, but in this moment I thought I need to have this woman <laughs> yes and now we're together for actually eight years so yeah Any questions about my life? About money? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, effect uh, for you uh, uh, about money? What, what do you mean, like, what effect, like, in, in the... For yourself? Yeah, it's just, uh, like, like, like I told, like, um, The fact that I could sit here, um, and sometimes that it's like make my life more easy than uh, I don't know. Like if I wouldn't have money, like I don't know what's. Maybe I would be same happy like I'm now. Um, I can't really tell you, but sometimes I'm using for sure. I'm using money um, just to like like. Like maybe to get also out, like I told, like to get out of these problems, like block out something, like who's my girlfriend, okay, how I can make a harmony right now, so, or, uh, yeah, sometimes like this, but, wow, I, there's a great record in this record store, and I really would love to have it, <laughs> so I buy it. But it's also not, I'm really rich, that's not the point, I can't, if there's a record, I I really would love to have it cost like 200 euros, like, no, sorry. Yeah. Always, always speaking of money here, there's an interesting line for me of a <coughs> dog is saying that even if, if it is an offering made from pure faith, if it accumulates in abundance, you must see it as a debt and you and want to return it. So I wanted if you give any thought about this, this feeling in, in debt or what's your point of this debt feeling. So if somebody, yeah, I don't know, like, um, so you mean like if somebody, or you would interpret it like if somebody, um, you get something, like more y that you should, and this is maybe like too much for yourself, and you, like, for example, like a record collection, I would buy and get much more money that, um, that I normally should get for it. Because they gave little amount of money. I don't know. I mean, the, the, 
yeah, this idea of that, like feeling that we when receiving something and somehow want to return it. So, what does that mean for you, like in, in yeah, compared to your life, or like if you ever had any kind of approach of feeling in debt for like the money you, you gain working or 